The Mecklenburg County ABC Law Enforcement Division provides a free training program to ABC permitted establishments called the Alcohol Seller and Server Excellence Training to educate employees on the possession and sale of alcohol. This ABC officer training covers underage sales, forms of acceptable identification, and employee age requirements. The Mecklenburg County ABC Board, more than a bottle. Hello, everybody. I am Beth Troutman, co-host of Good Morning BT on 99.3 FM, 1110 AM WBT. Welcome to Radio One Charlotte's Community Mental Health Series in partnership with the Mecklenburg County Alcoholic Beverage and Control Board. Now, this will be a space where you will find hope, resources, and assistance. And each month, we discuss topics for you, our listeners, that can affect your overall mental and behavioral health. Now, for this month, we are spotlighting Mecklenburg County ABC Board's Community Investment and grant programs. Now, so many people and organizations have asked for information. So we thought we would provide that information for you to place in your toolbox or to let you know if any other organization that you might know could benefit. Now, this month's series is something, as I stated, that we have been asked about. People have wanted to be part of this grant program. And I personally am very excited to learn and provide information for our listeners who have asked about this information. Now, this will be a recording session that will be saved on the Community Mental Health tab. This is on all of our Radio One Station websites. And joining me today to provide all of the information surrounding the ABC grant program is Ms. Kayla Hickman, Community Investment Program Director for Mecklenburg County ABC Board. She is the person who has all of the information that you need right now. Welcome, Kayla. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Beth. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Now, this month, we're focusing on your Mecklenburg County ABC Board's Community Investment and Grant Program. This is really exciting. Can you explain what the Mecklenburg County ABC Board's Community Investment and Grant Program is all about for folks who have been asking us about this? Absolutely. I would love to. Um, so Mecklenburg County ABC Board is founded as a social enterprise. And so that means that by design, it was built to make sure that individuals of Mecklenburg County have ap- access to substance use prevention, education, treatment and research. So that's really cool. Um, we are required by law to return 7% of our profits back into the community. And all of um, our operating comes from the sale of distilled spirits. So we don't operate by tax dollars, um, government funding, none of that um, solely from the sale of our products. Um, But I am honored to say that we actually go above and beyond our state uh, requirement of 7%. Last year in fiscal year 24, we contributed 21%. So that was about a total, um, actually over $6 million. Um, And that's only um, with our partnership with Anubia, which I'll talk more about, and through our Community Health and Wellness Grant Program, which you're going to learn more about. Um, That's not including the amount that we give back to Mecklenburg County, the City of Charlotte, the library, and law enforcement. This Um, is an exciting thing to learn about. What What are some of the goals that you have for these grants? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so really the goals of the grants is to um, extend access out to the community for substance use prevention, education, treatment, and research, um, and to just provide advancement for the community. What kind of organizations do you like to support for those folks who are out there who are thinking, oh, you know what, I know, I know an organization that could benefit from some of these grant programs. Yeah, so the organizations that we like to support, they have to be um, a 501c3 located within Mecklenburg County um, jurisdiction. So all of the nonprofits that we support are local. Um, And there are a couple organizations that we also support that are what is what's considered a state entity. So, for example, um, UNCC or like CMS school district. Um, But everybody that we support has to go towards the prevention, education, treatment or research of substance use disorder um, and has to be located here at Charlotte or Mecklenburg County. So you said that the programs have to help with prevention and education for any kind of substance use disorders in the community. How does the program contribute specifically to to these organizations? 
Yeah, so uh, through the program, we have um, the Community Health and Wellness Grant Program. We have four different grant opportunities. So we have the Special Grant Initiative, the Small Grant Program, the Annual Grant Program, and the Renewal Grant Program. And depending on what grant program, it depends on the different eligibility criteria and how much funding um, can be awarded. Uh, but all of it goes towards different um, projects. It might be an after-school program. It could be a mentorship program. Um, it could be an underage drinking prevention program. If you just touched on this, the, the kind of programs that are eligible, what is the process like? What is the application process for people who are listening who think, okay, I, I work with one of these organizations, I'm part of one of these organizations. How do they how do they apply? What is the what is this process? Yeah, so the process depends on the different grant um, that you're applying for. So I would encourage everybody who's interested to go to our website and we'll provide you that link at the end of the show um, because that's really going to break it down per grant program. Um, but general eligibility is that they have to be a Mecklenburg County nonprofit tax exempt charitable organization or a government entity such as the state of North Carolina or its municipal corporations. Um, so you have to submit a 501c3 determination letter that states that you're located in and that you serve the residents of Mecklenburg County. Um, you additionally have to demonstrate organizational growth and financial stability. And then I think we talked about this before, but everything that we do um, clearly supports the substance use prevention, education, treatment, and or research. So any project that you're applying for funding towards has to support that. Do you have uh, any kind of advice, any advice that you would offer to folks who are thinking about applying, who, who could use this grant money? Absolutely. So I would say for interested organizations, I would recommend starting early. Um, starting early gives you enough time to complete your application and plan for the project that you want to um, submit for funding. So being very clear in your application too on how the project that you're applying for connects to the prevention, education, treatment, and or research um, would be of the utmost importance, I would say, advice that I have to give. Uh, and also just visiting our website or reaching out for questions. We're here to help. Have you had, and I'm sure you've had plenty of success stories with all of the money that you mentioned at the beginning of this episode that you have already contributed and donated to the community. Do you have any specific success stories or a success story that you'd like to share? Yeah, so I'm going to leave it to Kim Alexandra from Our Daily Bread um, Foundation. She is one of our grant partners and has been for two years. So I have a story to share, but I want her to discuss more about her organization um, and share her own story as well. Um, but what I'd like to share is that we co-founded Anuvia back in, I believe, 1957. Um, so they are very much part of our roots and every year um, we provide funding to their organization and we operate as a partnership. Um, and where that really came through most recently is that um, Anuvia had an individual who graduated from their program. And at the end of their graduation, uh, they were asked, how did you hear about Anuvia? And the individual actually had shared that they were in an ABC store um, and that's when they learned about Anuvia. Uh, so it, we do our best to connect people to resources. There may be customers out there that reach out to an employee and say that they need help. And so we always make sure that we have things broadcasted in our store on the TV screens about Anuvia. We have resource cards and brochures um, and do our best to connect folks. But that was a full circle moment just to hear um, that someone had learned about Anuvia from one of our stores. Yeah, that's that's a fantastic success story and and a huge, huge win. And as you mentioned, we also have Kim Alexander joining us from our Daily Bread Foundation, and she is the founder and executive director of our Daily Bread. Miss Alexander, thank you so much for being part of this with us today. Now, Kayla was just saying that you all are a huge success story, but tell me a little bit more about your organization, Our Daily Bread, and thank you. Thank you for your time today. Yeah, and thank you guys for having us. Um, again, my name is Kim Alexander of, of Our Daily Bread Foundation. We serve boys ages 13 to 15 to reimagine family structures by building kinship in the kitchen. But there are three main pillars that we focus on. That's trauma wellness, social integration, and entrepreneurship. And uh, we do this not only to give these kids a sense of belonging, but also to encourage them to live a drug-free life. 
Well, it's really, really incredible, the work that you do. And I know that the ABC board, that their grant program has actually supported the work that you do. Can you talk to us a little bit about that success? Absolutely. You know, um, there's two ways to discuss it. First of all, being traumatized as my as I was myself growing up one of eight children and every time walking out of my door, all I would see is drugs and gun violence. Um, similarly, we work with youth just like that. So we work with guys that, you know, either there's a drug abuse in their home or among peers or even in their schools. And what our program is called, I Love Me Say No to Drugs. We realize if you can replace love with something that's greater than what you see, then you have a better opportunity of succeeding and also living a more drug-free, productive life. I love those words. Just replace some of the bad with love, with something greater, something bigger. Can you talk about maybe some of the, the individual success stories, the families that, that you have helped, the, the work that you've seen have a positive impact on the community? Absolutely. So imagine a youth coming in with their head down, not knowing what they want to do. And through journaling and photojournalism, we allow them to have a space where they can hear their own voice. And what that looks like in the family is that they come in, they may be traumatized by someone in a family that's doing substance abuse. We've seen Brian, for example, come in, his mom was on drugs, and he had no way to express himself or how to deal or have life life coping skills and how to address that. So through journaling, he was not only given a safe space to tell his story, but also was able to discuss it in a group that was very safe for him to engage other peers that had similar stories. So it was very impactful to do that. And on the other side of it, we have given them cameras. I love me say no the drugs. I am more than meets the eye. So now I know who I am. Now I know where I want to go. So how do I see myself through my own lens? Going back to my neighborhood, looking at the neighborhood in a different lens, taking it to my schools, you know, finding myself in a space of what I want it to look like rather than what it actually looks like. So we're very grateful to the ABC board for that because it allows ourselves or our daily bread to use our immersive learning in a way that's not traditional. Uh, with the resources that they've given us, the education and drug prevention, providing materials that we need that can pass out to other kids. We've seen our kids firsthand become mentors and leaders as, as a result of our of ABC board grant, small grant process. See, it's just incredible the work that you're doing. And it's so um, heartwarming to know that the ABC board grants have, have helped you continue changing communities and changing the lives of families and young people. And Kayla, I know that this must be um, heartwarming for you, given that this is the work that you do. What, what are the goals and aspirations that you have for the grant programs and, 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 the community around you, and how would you inspire people to want to get involved? So I would say looking ahead that I hope one of my goals is to create more opportunities beyond financial support. So we're a community investment team, right? How can we deepen our investment into the community beyond financial support? Uh, that's one of my goals. Um, really just adapting to the needs of the community and hearing from what they need um, to inform where we might go in the future with our dollars and ensuring that no one is left behind about substance abuse. I think it's all about meeting people where they are in the community. Um, so that that's a little snippet of the future. It, how can you get involved and how can you help? Um, nonprofits need your support and they need you um, volunteering, whether that's packing bags, whether that's reading to students, um, or maybe that's going on their webpage and donating or purchasing an item from their wish list. And additionally, if you want to get more involved, there are several board member openings for local nonprofits. So that could be another option to support um, the local community as well. And you can even align it with what your goals in, in are or what you're passionate about as an individual. Um, and definitely for substance abuse in general, just supporting destigmatization destigmatization um, and helping people find help um, and just providing them with a listening ear if needed without judgment. 
Ladies, this has just been such fantastic information shared today. And I know that this spotlight on what Mecklenburg County ABC Board has to offer the community will be so beneficial to so many of our viewers. Kayla, is there anything else that you would like to share? Anything I might have missed when it comes to the kinds of grant programs you offer and the, the process itself? Yes, I would love to share some more. So under the Community Health and Wellness Grant Program umbrella, we have four different grant opportunities. So we have the special grant initiative, and that's what we like to refer to as the grant in a box. Um, and the special grant initiative is for a one year project period, um, and it's up to $25,000. And it's for an organization to implement the two good for drugs um, curriculum, which is funded by the Mendes Foundation. It's an evidence-based program, um, and it's designed to mitigate the risk factors and enhance protective factors related to alcohol, tobacco, and other drug use. Um, so the focus is for um, K through five population with this grant, and it will be, it's unfortunately closed, um, but to spread awareness that it exists and that it's one of our grant programs, I wanted to bring that to attention. Um, then we have the small grant program, which is for organizations who have less than a $350,000 operating budget. Um, and the small grant program is for up to $25,000. And that can be for the prevention or education of substance use disorder, any projects related to that. And that process to apply is actually open right now. Um, so our letter of intent is the first step to apply. So that will be open from November 15th to December 13th. So if you're able or interested, submit your letter of intent. You can go to our website to do that um, and give it a shot. Then we review the letter of intent. Our team of evaluators make a decision and you may or may not be invited um, to apply for the full application then. And then uh, that's two special grant, small grant program. And then we have the annual grant program. Um, and that's for a one year project period for organizations that have over a $350,000 operating budget, um, up to $75,000 that can be towards focus on prevention of education, treatment, uh, research or education. And that letter of intent is coming up. So if you're interested in applying and you're um, a larger organization, you can submit your letter of intent of intent by uh, December 20th. It'll be open from December 2nd to December 20th of 2024. And last but not least, we have our renewal grant program, um, which is by invitation only. It's considered step down funding. So if you are a past grant partner of our annual grant program, um, then your next step would be going into the renewal grant program. Um, so if you're interested in receiving funding from the ABC board, your best bet is to either start with a small grant program, the special grant initiative, or the annual grant program depending on um, the operating size of your organization and what most aligns with you. And I know I'm talking a lot here, but there's just so much to know and so much great information to get out there. Um, but lastly, I would like to just highlight that this year we're working with 68 different projects um, that support substance use disorder, whether that's prevention, education, treatment, or research, 68 projects, that's a lot. Um, so that's over 60 nonprofit organizations here in Mecklenburg County um, that we're supporting. And over 20 of them are smaller organizations, just like Our Daily Bread Foundation um, is an example. Well, Kayla, I feel like this this episode could have been like two hours long. You are such a wealth of information. You can tell, obviously, that you are very passionate about what you do. And you are, of course, just to remind people, Kayla Hickman, the Community Investment Program Director for Mecklenburg County ABC Board. And Kim Alexander, thank you so much for joining us, too. The founder and executive director of Our Daily Bread, which you just heard Kayla talking about. And I hope that you all out there take advantage of the resources and the information information that these ladies shared today. Now, if you or if you know of an organization, if you have an organization or know of an organization that could benefit from the services provided by Mecklenburg County ABC Board's Community Investment and Grant Program, and you want more information on how to apply, here's what you do. Visit mecabc.com and then look under the tab for Community Outreach. Click on ABC Grant Programs, and that's it. It's that simple. Or if you know someone who could benefit 
from the services provided by the organization we talked about today, Our Daily Bread, visit OurDailyBreadFoundation.org. And a special thank you again to the Mecklenburg County ABC Board for making all of this possible today and providing the community the means and resources for organizations such as Our Daily Bread to thrive. Thank you all for being a part of this special, special day and for all of this uh, really incredible information that could really change lives. Thank you so much, thank Beth. You. And thank you so much, Kim. It's an honor to be thank able to you. partner with you. Absolutely. Same here.